why the past is so hard to let go of and why it's so important to stop being illusional about it. This week I had to go to Moscow uh, just for one day to settle some silly bureaucratic stuff. But I was horrified by that perspective because I left Moscow eight years ago after spending there seven years of my life. You know that period from late 20s to early 30s that many people claim to be the best years ever. And I got that idea so ingrained in my mind that a thought that after all those years I was left with nothing but a pretty doubtful work slash life experience and two painfully broken relationships. Well, this thought uh, made me pretty sad. And even thinking about Moscow um, was painful for me. But I had to go there. And surprisingly, I brought some very important insights that I want to share with you today. Hey, my friends, if you're new here, I'm Anna Anastasia, and this channel is about everything that is mindful, minimalist, and creative. So, uh, as you know, I'm um, sort of a sentimental minimalist. I tend to attach meaning to items, um, to create sort of beacons out of them to guide me through everything in life. And it's a sort of an everyday magic for me. Uh, you know how in fairy tales, main characters are often given some items uh, that turn out to have um, magical properties. And later on, they become helpers of the characters to help them go through all kinds of adventures, happy and unhappy ones. Yeah, that, that's what um, all the sentimental items are for me, like those mm, magic helpers. But these days I tend to think not only about material objects from the past, but about immaterial ones, like memories of the past and the past in general. There is no greater sorrow than to recall in misery the time when we were happy. We tend to idealize the past, to forget most of the upsetting memories, and we want to keep that world of the past alive in our hearts. We want to have it, to possess it, especially in the present days filled with struggles. We believe that the past is never going to change anymore and thus it gives us that so much needed sense of stability. But interestingly, our mind tends to change our memories, thus turning them into illusions. I will leave a link um, uh, to the article explaining this phenomenon and uh, there the author uses quite a great metaphor to describe the mechanism, how it is done. One theory is that rehearsing our memories of past events can temporarily make those memories malleable. In other words, retrieving a memory might be a bit like taking ice cream out of the freezer and leaving it in direct sunlight for a while. By the time our memory goes back into the freezer, it might have naturally become a little misshapen, especially if someone has meddled with it in the meantime. Remembering the past and clinging onto it are two absolutely different things. When we remember the past, we, um, we analyze, we draw parallels, and at the same time, we are able and eager to change depending on the experience acquired. But when we live in the past, we see everything through the prism of it. It's like living in a Groundhog Day movie. Yes, it's nice and lovely and safe, but it's a swamp that slowly sucks you in. It's a limited space with no place for you to grow. 
I always admired my father's ability to get interested in new things. At the age of 70, he was an apt internet user, he had social media accounts and expressed clearly oppositional political views. But at the same time, and I can see it so clearly now, uh, he was afraid of changes. He didn't like them at all. He had the same armchair for decades. He refused to get any new clothes while the old ones were falling apart. He didn't let me do even a tiny bit of renovation in the apartment. And he didn't want to leave the country. And before I thought that it was because he just didn't want to bother. He just wanted quietness. Although now I can see that he was he was afraid of finding himself in a new reality and i have the same fear honestly but guess what the new reality never asks it just arrives this country refuses to accept the new reality and i realized it so deeply and clearly when i went to moscow I was like looking at holograms of people shopping, walking, arguing, submitting documents, eating and drinking. Just slight little changes, you know, like in a Matrix movie, those small disturbances reminded that the hologram was not true. So many people here refuse to to accept that the past is gone forever, they refuse to face the new reality, the present, in all its ugliness. And it's a very disturbing fact for me. It's very hard to, to accept. Clinging onto the comfort and glory of the past leads to indifference, blindness, and petrification of the heart. We all can see uh, what one person can do, one mind that is obsessed with the glorious past. No man is rich enough to buy back his past. When we root into things too much, be them material objects or immaterial ones, like memories, they become an inseparable part of our identity. And it's not necessarily bad, please don't get me wrong. It's just so important to maintain a special sobriety of the mind to keep analyzing the situation and keep remembering that we are so much more than what we have at the moment. We are so much more than our memories. Life is constantly changing. Uh, planets are moving and it's natural and there is no way back. Everything disappears or drastically transforms at some point and this thought is pretty challenging to digest with our mind because it's all about vanishing, it's about dying and honestly I'm afraid of death because it's it's an it's inevitable ending of me or some kind of a new beginning of something that I have no idea of. In my 20s, I had a dream and I always write down uh, the most significant dreams of mine, just to remember. So I had a dream that um, after death, we are all given a chance to live again but a shorter life and while we still remember what happened to us before thus this second life is a is a gift to us a final beautiful spark before something that we can't even imagine and in that dream i knew that the second life world was so close to us as if uh, separated with a thin transparent film and um, sometimes we could even feel that second life world so yeah what a blessing it would be if that dream was true right 
the power of letting things go lies in the ability to accept the end of things, the end of the past. So many times I caught myself suffering only because I realized that um, time was ticking away and this or that precious moment will never be repeated. A Russian classic author, a Nobel Prize winner Ivan Bunin, wrote a very, very short and very poetic story, which is called The Swing. It's about love and it ends with the following words. Let's leave things as they are, because it will never be better than now. When I read this story for the first time in my teens, I didn't understand the meaning at all. Back then, I, I was sure that I will forever be in love with who I was in love back then and that the metaphorical swing will never cease swinging. But it did. Life is a movement, a constant movement in relationship. And thought, trying to capture that movement in terms of the past, as memory, is afraid of life. I was so afraid to be in Moscow again, because I thought I would be overwhelmed with my past pain, with my memories, with my disappointments, with nostalgia of all those beautiful days of my youth. But I felt nothing like that. I just had that burning intention to get things done and move forward. Memories are just memories. They don't control me. They don't guide me. Sometimes they hurt a little. It's just because I'm a human, like everyone else. Although with the, with the general level of dehumanization, I'm not sure about everyone else anymore. But that's yet another topic to discuss. Letting go of the past is like making the most beautiful paper boat and letting it sail down the stream. We know that it will inevitably sink and we just watch it for the last time. There's beauty in vanishing and disappearing because it gives way to something new because this is how our world works. I wanted the past to go away. I wanted to leave it like another country. I wanted my love to close and open like a hinge, like a wing, like the part of the song where it falls down over the rocks, an explosion, a discovery. I wanted to hurry into the work of my life. I wanted to know whoever I was, I was alive for a little while. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Please feel free to share in the comments what are your relations with the past and with all the memories, whether they weigh you down or empower you to fly. All other friends and I are excited to know. And please be safe and keep your heart open. And I hope to see you soon. Пока-пока.